Hello everyone, I am Alessandro Sticchi from the University of Bern and uh, today here at PCR Online we have the great pleasure and honor to interview Dr. Sushil Kodali, Director of the Structural Heart and the Valve Center at New York Presbyterian Columbia University Medical Center, Associate Professor in Medicine at Columbia University Irving Medical Center. Uh, beyond the several awards of Dr. Sushil, uh, we he was also co-investigator in the partner trial and the associated registries and is a member of the partner trial steering committee and he is the principal investigator of the Tricen trial and the six month follow up of the Tricen trial will be presented today in TCT21 as a late breaking clinical trials. The Tricen study presented uh, lastly at the EuroPCR21 with a 30 day follow up is a multi center prospective single arm early feasibility study designed to assess the safety and feasibility of transcatheter tricuspid valve replacement using the evoke valve Edward Life Science. The study included uh, 56 patients uh, with uh, more than uh, moderate uh, tricuspid regurgitation, TR. 92% uh, of the patients uh, uh, were at least. Uh, uh, with, say, with the severe TR at baseline, and uh, the favorable 30 day results showed high device and uh, procedural success with 98% for the device and uh, procedural success rates of 94%. Significant reduction in uh, TR severity with 98% of patients with mild or less TR, around 77% of patients with no to measure adverse events at 30 days, no stroke, no myocardial infarction, significant improvement in a class uh, with 77% of patients in class one and two, and the uh, Kansas City cardiomyopathy questionnaire with uh, a significant improvement with 90 points of difference and uh, an improvement in a six minute walking test uh, of 46 meters. So the 30 day experience uh, with the Evoco transfemoral system demonstrated uh, technical feasibility and a very acceptable safety profile in a population with several comorbidities and a high bleeding risk. With a significant TR reduction and uh, symptomatic improvement of 30 days in patients with a clinically significant TR. Dr. Kodali, a warm welcome uh, from PCR and uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, my very first question is, of course, uh, what are the results of the six month follow up the Tristan study? Thank you very much. And thank you for the invitation. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here with you. Um, and I think you, you highlighted a lot of the 30 day results, which are important. And I think one of the uh, things with this presentation and analysis is the, those 30 day results were in a limited cohort and limited centers. And so with this analysis, we have a much larger 30 day data set as well. It's 132 patients um, and, sh and showing sort of some of the same results. Um, the device success was still high, 96%. Um, and the, the, a lot of the 30 day results were, were fairly comparable. You know, there were cardiovascular mortality was, uh, you know, 2.4. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, in, in addition, there was other, one additional uh, mortality. So all cause mortality was a little bit higher. You know, at uh, you know, but you know, overall the results were pretty comparable. The main complication was still bleeding risk. The bleeding events remained very high, uh, even in the larger data set. Uh, the bleeding events were 17.7 percent. Um, you know, there was one life-threatening, one fatal bleed in a patient that had a, a valve uh, migration and, and a procedural complication, but. Interestingly, of those 22 bleeding events, you know, five were the large access side, uh, three were uh, non-access side, but other procedural bleeding. Yeah. So only eight of the 22 were really procedural. There were GI, this comorbid population. Yeah. And, and, you know, we have to learn how to manage anticoagulation because, you know, 17.7%, that, that's too high. I mean, so we got to figure out the bleeding and maybe anticoagulation strategies or how we manage these patients coming into the procedure whether we reverse things like that. And, and the pacemaker rates uh, were stayed stable, they're around 10%. So in patients without a pre-existing pacemaker, you know, a, a third of the population, 35% already had a pacemaker going in. So if you, if you look at the rest of the population, the, the pacemaker rate was about 10%, new pacemaker rates. So it really confirmed a lot of those 30 day results in very similar, so that was reassuring. So in a much larger cohort, the, the data set was good. So at six months, uh, you know, the, 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 you know the, this trial and, and follow-up is ongoing. So we don't have full data on the 132 at six months. We have data on about 53 patients at six months. 
Um, but the, 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 the results were stable. Um, the, all patients had mild or less uh, TR. Um, you know, the majority of patients had a two grade reduction, 95% had a two grade reduction and more than 25% had a four grade reduction uh, in TR. Um, so that, that was very reassuring, the clinical results of TR, and we, didn't, we weren't seeing valve failure at six months. I mean, obviously it's early six months, but no valve failure. The clinical results remained stable. Uh, survival was, was stable. There was only uh, one additional mortality. So survival at, uh, at six months uh, in the cohort, again, Kap by Kaplan-Meier, uh, remained stable, and it was at 96%. Uh, rehospitalizations remain stable, and it was at 94% rehospitalization at, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, 94% freedom from rehospitalization at uh, six yeah. months. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that this is a population uh, that going in the year prior to enrollment in the trial had a rehospitalization re rate of 39%. So they'd had a lot mm -hmm. of hospitalizations before. Um, and then the functional improvement remained stable. Um, you know, six meter walk distances improved uh, by about 56 meters, um, it, which is more than 25%. These patients start low, you know, the average six minute walk was 199. So, but there was a 56 meter improvement, which was significant. The KCCQ dramatic improvements uh, up by 27 points. So, which is really quite, quite phenomenal. So the clinical results stayed stable, the valve stayed stable, but again, it's, it's, it's limited at six months. It's not the full cohort, and we're going to continue to collect the data on that full 132 patients. Absolutely, absolutely. But congratulations, they are really, really exciting results. And uh, if, we, if we think that there are several replacement devices now under evaluations, uh, this is a really, really encouraging results uh, for the field, for the replacement. So how would this data, uh, you think, it can, can impact on the tricuspid uh, in, uh, interventional field? So I think, you know, based on this data, we've started the TRISED2 study, which is the pivotal randomized trial. I mean, we see clinical improvements, you know, we've all seen it. The question is, is, you know, do we benefit these patients by compared to medical therapy? So the TRISED2, it's randomized to medical therapy. Um, it's initiated, it's ongoing. So I think that, that that's where we got to get. We got to get that trial. And obviously, class TR and triluminate on the edge to edge repair are in pivotal randomized trials. So these three trials are going to help sort of push the field forward. Does fixing TR help survival, help quality? I think we need to answer those questions. Um, in, 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 you know, we won't answer to the question of you know who should get replacement who should get edge to edge say all, all of these show benefit i mean these are all things that you know in the next 10 years we got to understand and answer because there may be different populations and for different things or maybe you know you could choose whatever in each patient but there, there's sort of anatomic restrictions right it's important in this study you know we, we don't i don't have the screening data um but you know in terms of the numbers but you know th there are anatomic exclusions as there are anatomic exclusions for edge to edge there's anatomic exclusions for replacement. And some of it is annular size. Some of it is, you know, the RV is too small. Uh, some of, you know, sometimes it's the pacemaker lead and it's stuck into the papillary muscle. And those are some of the considerations when we screen for replacement. Um, and we've learned a lot in this EFS about that. We learned who's a good candidate. You know, in the beginning, we were concerned we couldn't do pacemakers. Now we feel very comfortable, 35% were pacers. But we learned there's certain anatomies that may not be good. And I think that's, there's, that's what this study has really informed as we go forward. Yes, absolutely. I fully agree. The patient selection plays a tremendous role right now. And uh, probably uh, we need uh, to compare these patients, as uh, you said, with the optimal medical therapy. So probably you can uh, uh, say something uh, about the Tristand 2 trial. How is going uh, this trial? You know, there's a lot of enthusiasm. We're, you know, we, we're, there's momentum. Uh, you know, more and more sites are activated. We're not fully uh, activated. So, you know, yeah, I always... I'm always ambitious, but I'm hoping we can finish it in the near future so we can move on to getting the results and, and hopefully deliver a therapy because this is, this is a population that really is an unmet need, right? They're, you know, we don't like to operate on these patients. You know, we've always sort of said diuretics and everything else, but you know, it, it, it doesn't work at, at some point. And so, you know, this, these are patients that really, you know, when I started, you know, we've been over the last five, six years, different devices. It was, you didn't see a lot of tricuspid patients. Now, every week, you know, you know, so many tricuspid patients because now pe you know, re people, patients, referrings are seeing the need. Um, and now that you have 
potential options, you know, we're seeing a lot more of these patients and a lot of momentum. Yeah, yeah, the tricuspid ward is probably the other topic right now in the interventional cardiology uh, yeah. field. Uh, what, what can we conclude after the trice and the six month results uh, and uh, the coverage of the tricuspid in uh, TCT about the evolution of uh, the tricuspid ward? So, I mean, I think we, we see that tricuspid intervention is feasible. Uh, we, we see that it's, rel it's reasonably safe. Uh, we see that it's effective, uh, replacement is effective in el eliminating TR. We see that patients don't go into RV failure um, and that, you know, patients do benefit and, and, and we see clinical improvement. Whether it, you know, we just, and we've seen that with the other, you know, uh, feasibility studies with the edge to edge technologies as well. So now we have a, a data set. We, we see that there's benefit in potentially treating these patients and we need to move the field forward. You know, whether it's this replacement device, another, whether it's other repair techniques, those are all things that are gonna evolve over the next decade as we get more and more data. And hopefully these initial pivotal trials with edge to edge and replacement will, will prove what, what I, I think anecdotally when I see these patients that they benefit from treatment, but we need to collect the data. Yeah. Absolutely. Dr. Kodali, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, for sharing this preview of the six month results of the Tristan study uh, with all the PCR uh, family. It was a great pleasure and honor to be with you here. Congratulations again uh, for uh, the fantastic results of the Tristan. And uh, thank you very much to all of you for uh, your kindness, your attention, and enjoy this beautiful TCT addiction. And take a look at the very interesting reports for TCT on PCR online. Thank you. Th th thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.